Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Today, I want to talk to you guys about college in the automation industry and what type of degree you should get. I just want to start off by saying it highly depends on what industry you're working in. Because there's industries like the medical industry where you have to have certain degrees to be able to get a job in that industry. And so it, it is very industry specific and also job employer specific on what type of degrees you truly, truly need. So the way that I'm going to present this is if you want to be an automation engineer and I'm going to target this with two different uh, types of employers and one of those types being a systems integrator like we are having a ton of exposure to a ton of new systems and, and, and integrating and building systems from the ground up versus working for another company that is like a Ford or GM and you're working for a big manufacturer, maybe it's a food processing company and, and kind of going over some of the dynamics between the, the different job types and industries. So diving into our industry in particular, we have probably one of the widest ranges of acceptability of a college degree. So you could literally land an engineering job with zero degree. You can end, land a controls engineering job with zero degree. And I'm also gonna dive into to why it's important to get those higher level degrees because they do matter. Even though I personally am not a super big degree person, uh, I do believe that degrees have purposes in our ecosystem of jobs and employment and being able to get the, the best job and the most desirable job. Let's just go ahead and point out the one super simple obvious thing. The better your degree is, the more doors and opportunities that are going to be open for you. So there's a big thing that goes on in every industry and that's like a lot of politics that go on, go into hiring an employee. And when I say that, what I mean is certain employers look for particular things and if you don't have this particular thing, it's a pretty much a, a, a 0% chance that you'll get the job. So like if you have a, a job that is saying that it requires a master's in engineering, you are not going to be able to get a job if you have the bachelor's in engineering unless they just so happen to make a special job title for you in this particular company. Now this is the company that are, is very strict on, on who they hire. So if they say, well engineers, we only hire with engineering degrees and that's, that's just it. That's just the answer for them. Uh, now you have other companies though. This is where it gets into the other companies and where it can be very, very dynamic because you have a company that's like mine that I, I personally only care about skill set and work ethic. So if you have a good skill set and you have a good work ethic, you're highly likely to get a job with us. I actually care more about work ethic than I do skill set. So if you have a general understanding of the industry and, and you seem to be a smart, educated person and seem to learn quickly, then as long as you have really good work ethic, you're actually a person that I'd bring into the company and give an opportunity to. Uh, because believe it or not, work ethic is one of the, the, the biggest shortcomings that we have this day. So if you can get people with good work ethic and bring them up to speed, then that's 100% uh, the, the best bet for a company. Now, there's still a lot of companies that are stuck in this degree mentality of, you know, you have to have this degree before we'll bring you on. And don't get me wrong, it's a good vetting process in trying to find the proper employees and, and find good employees. Because if you find somebody who did four years in college or six years in college, uh, they're going to be a they're going to be much more likely to perform on their job. They're going to be more likely to show up to work. If they can show up to work for or if they can show up to school for that many years, then they'll be able to show up to work as well. Or at least that's the general consensus. So what is the proper level of degree for you? You can go all the way as low as a, as a no degree to an associate's degree with some type of robotics program at a local community college or a state college. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of these colleges are starting to have these type of programs and you can go and get an engineering degree in electrical, mechanical engineering and even take that to the next step and maybe get very specific into a particular type of engineering and uh, become more skilled in that in that field. So let's kind of talk about some of the big differences between, let's say for instance, getting an associate degree and getting a master's degree. For now, we'll just leave out the no degree because the no degree person is somebody that was like 12 years old in their basement coding 
and now they're 18, 19, 20, however old, and uh, they're trying to get a job in automation. And with that being said, if somebody that is like that, they can adapt over to automation, but it's gonna be hard for them to get their foot into the door to anywhere really, unless they can just show their, their skills or if they buy their own PLC or robot and then learn from that. So that, that way they can specifically say to an employer, hey, I can program Fanuc robots. I can program Allen Bradley PLCs. So the, 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 the getting in the door will be extremely hard if you have no degree uh, at most places especially if you don't have a super high skill set and especially if you're trying to go directly into an engineering uh, job title. So going into the associate's degree versus a bachelor's degree, those are gonna be the two main ones that I compare right now. Up to this current point, there are really not many engineering degrees that are very good for automation whatsoever. There's probably literally a handful of colleges that have good automation specific engineering degrees. There's pretty much zero. Uh, you may have some type of robotics and automation type of elective classes that you can take while getting an engineering degree, but technically Automation is not really considered engineering. So you have electrical engineering and you have like mechanical engineering, but even like a controls engineer in the world of engineering for some reason has not really been put to a place where it has, it is considered its own engineering type. Um, you can maybe say a software engineer would be close to it, but realistically when you say controls engineer, there is not really a such thing as a controls engineer and a controls engineering degree. I personally am not even aware of an actual controls engineering degree. So if you are aware of a controls engineering degree, put it down in the comments below because I would definitely be interested in taking a look into that one. Uh, it's actually one of the huge things that is one of my life's goals is to start a college, uh, whether it be starting out as a partnership with other colleges or buying a college at some point in time. I'm not sure how we would navigate that, but just having a college that is very specific to automation and, and also has very good uh, intern programs where people from the college immediately are working in the field uh, because there's about to be a huge, huge, massive gap and I wanna be one of those individuals that helps close that gap and also offer opportunities to people that may have never had the opportunities uh, if they're not presented in this way. The main advantage that an engineering degree gets you it gets you into those political companies that say you have to have an engineering degree to work here. And it is a true thing, it is a real thing. So that will get you in that door. And then having a master's, I don't know that necessarily getting a master's is gonna add much to it, because generally, I would say for working in an automation department, you're not gonna be required to have a master's degree. And if, the, and if they do, I, I just really don't see it happen. There's not enough engineers out there with master's degrees to find employees, because to be honest, engineers are kind of a hard thing to come by now, especially if you're trying to look for somebody with a master's of, in engineering. That's gonna be even harder to come by. People are, you know, wanting to hire up engineers very quickly. So if you at all have the opportunity, the best thing to do is a stack a, an associate degree with an engineering degree. If you can somehow find a way to take your engineering electives and, and you do some of the automation programs with that engineering course. Or degree and if you're just kind of looking to get the most skill set possible 100% hands down your best option is to take uh, a community college associate degree type of program or state college I don't want to just say a community college but the community college is gonna be much more affordable for getting an associate's degrees and to be honest a lot of the colleges are actually starting to get some pretty decent robotics programs, especially over the course of the years. Like even the college that, one of the colleges that I went to, the automation program has gotten much, much better just since I went through the course because it's been, you know, eight years now or how many ever years, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while. And so they've had time to develop that course. And even back then, whenever I was in that, that course, there's, there's other schools out here doing a really, really good job at uh, their automation robotics programs. So if you can do something along the lines, of, even if you go to a community college or state college, doesn't matter, but take either the whole entire associate's degree and try to apply as much of that to an engineering degree as possible, uh, that would be the best way to go. Or even take a pre-engineering degree at one of these community colleges and also do the same thing. Try to take as much automation specific courses as possible. Because if you want skills, really it take you have to take the courses you have to do the education 
on the specific skills that you want. There's there's like so many gaps in 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 specific skills and and it can be hard like sometimes you have to hone in your own skills you have to kind of decide and make a path for your skills and then find a, an employer that matches those skills like somebody may say when they're going through college let's say it's mechanical engineering right well i don't know if it's if they're that the employer is going to be solidworks or if they're going to do inventor which are both uh design softwares the mechanical design softwares and and so like the college may just teach a little bit of both or may barely teach either because they're like oh well it doesn't really matter because they're gonna you know we don't know what they're gonna do whenever they graduate but here's the thing if you graduate and and, and before you graduate you're spending all your time in SolidWorks right or inventor doesn't matter if you're spending all your time in that one software and just like get, just like getting really good at it watching tutorials on it that's what's really gonna hone in your skills really this is for a topic for another video so I'm gonna quit ranting on about that. Uh, you'll just have to hit the subscribe button because that, that, these are the things we like to talk about on this channel. And it's actually probably going to be coming up in a video here soon. So going back to the topic of this video, take the, the, the courses from the associate's degree, as many as you can get that would align up with the uh, engineering degree or pre-engineering degree. And I will tell you right now that a lot of the classes do not line up and you may need to take some extra classes that you can still tack onto your degree. So when you graduate, it says you have X amount of credit hours, uh, which will be, uh, you know, it'll be a higher amount of credit hours uh, than, than if you would have just got an engineering degree. But you may take an extra semester, two semesters, maybe even four semesters of classes to get those uh, extra, extra skill-based courses. If you're going to spend four extra semesters, you might as well get the associate's degree. If you can't align everything with a pre-engineering degree, uh, you might as well grab the associate's degree, get a pre-engineering degree, and then get a uh, bachelor's degree uh, with that. Now, that's kind of the best of both worlds to, to get the most amount of education, the most amount of skill with kind of the least amount of schooling. I would, I would, and, and I want to challenge somebody to to what your thoughts are on this if, if you're in a place of, of, of having an educated opinion on this. Do you think that you are better off getting a master's in engineering for somebody who wants to do automation, uh, get a master's in automation, or a master's in engineering I should say, or get an associate's in a robotics, advanced manufacturing type of degree, an associate, and then getting a uh, bachelor's in engineering of whether it be mechanical or electrical engineering uh, or even maybe even software engineering I would like to know your thoughts on that because I kind of definitely have my place for it and then whether whether you, you want to go mechanical electrical that's gonna be kind of you and what you want to do for your career path but this is really a discussion discussion of what type of degree you should get uh, hopefully the me rambling on for this period of time that you uh, got a good idea of and what I think you should do for a college degree and kind of the proper uh, college degree path. Don't get me wrong, like you can't take 100% my word. You have to do your own education and and try to make the proper decision for yourself. Uh, but this is an educated opinion. This is me looking at the industry and being in the industry for 10 years and seeing uh, what all is going on in the industry and seeing the different employer types. And, and that's a big thing that I want to go back to. A lot of systems integrator like us, we do not uh, require degrees because we realize practical skills. We're not manufacturers that produce a product. That's a big thing. Manufacturers that produce a product, and so they can afford to have an engineer that sits there and they suck, they suck and they can't do their job. That's just being very blunt. I'm not saying that they don't try to get their engineers to be the best engineers they can get them to be, but they can afford to not uh, have the best engineer or, or the engineer not be skilled or not have the best work ethic. Whereas a systems integrator, we are very dependent on our product uh, that we sell being very efficient in, in the product that we make because we only make, you know, one system. We make one robotic cell and then we, we sell that for, you know, 250 to a million, two million, three million, ten million dollars all over the place, right? But we're selling one one system. We don't have a, a, a product that keeps producing over and over and over again. So we have to be very selective and very efficient in the product that we produce. So that's why we have really found that engineers uh, with skill sets are the highest valued and work ethic are the highest valued 
uh, engineers to have and the degree for us is not as important. Now given this is still going to depend company to company and not just all systems integrators will be this way, but I'll tell you right now that systems integrators will be a lot more relaxed on this versus uh, somebody that's like a GM or Toyota and especially the bigger companies too. There's other manufacturing companies that you could work in and get away with not having like a bachelor's degree in engineering and become an engineer but it's going to be I'm gonna say it'd be less likely especially with getting into an automation role because a lot of these manufacturers don't even have internal automation or they have very small automation teams. Hopefully this uh, video was useful for you guys. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this and uh, let's change the world together.